Good morning from California to everyone. It's 10 a.m. in the morning in California, and I want to welcome you all. Thank you so much for coming. Um, uh, it's, it's really an honor for all of you to be here. And I'm Susan Koenig, and um, I am hosting different guests to teach for me on these once a month Saturday morning classes. And uh, our presenter, our guest presenter today is Lisa Sack. And I'm going to just turn it over to Lisa and let her introduce herself and the context for the class and move right into the class. Thank you very much, Susan. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone on the on our, our session today. So as, as Susan said, I'm Lisa Sack. I am an Ayurvedic health counselor, a yoga therapist, and a soon-to-be certified panasomatic educator. That will happen in January. Very exciting. Uh, and I actually, I came to Hannah Somatics as a means of becoming a more proficient Ayurvedic practitioner. So Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga, and it focuses on diet and lifestyle and living in, in balance with the, harm, with the rhythms of nature uh, so that you can live a healthy and a long life. And one of the things you have to be able to do if you practice Ayurveda is to sense into your own system and become aware of when you are starting to go out of balance. And ideally, you feel those shifts in balance as early as possible so that you can then bring yourself back into balance. So I, I came to Hanismatics because I thought I need something to really help me learn to be more attuned to, to my body, to my soma. And very quickly, I was completely captivated by the practice to the point that I now teach very little asana. If people want me to teach yoga postures, I will. But really, this has become my personal practice. And it is really what I teach to people if there's a, uh, a physical component to what it is that I'm doing when I'm working with them. So a little context for this class. Uh, I do a lot of work in the ultra-Orthodox Jewish communities of Brooklyn. And it's not uncommon in those communities for women to have had eight plus children by the time they are 40 years old. And so you can imagine that that has a very profound impact on their pelvic cavity, their pelvic floor, their muscles, uh, and certainly on their posture from, you know, sort of carrying children. And so the question I'm often asked in that community when I present this work is, is this work going to strengthen my core? Because I need to strengthen my core. So I want to digress for a moment to say that when they use the word core, what they typically mean is their abdominal muscles. But I want to point out that for us as hanasomatic practitioners, you know, our core is not just the muscles of the front of our body. It's the muscles of our side. It's our pelvic floor. It's the muscles on our back, plus all of the connective tissue that allows us to stabilize and move effectively. And frankly, to do pretty much everything that we do, stand up straight, breathe, urinate, defecate, uh, and of course, to move our trunk in all the various directions that our spine can move, whether that's flexion, extension, lateral flexion, or rotation. So today's class is a class that I put together to really try to help these women who have almost no education in understanding their bodies actually begin to feel what's going on in what we would call our somatic center. Now, I will say, we cannot do our whole core in one class. So we actually really are going to focus a lot on our abdominal muscles in the front of our body. But I did just want to give you a little bit of context. Uh, and one thing we've learned from our beloved Susan, and by the way, I forgot to say thank you, Susan, I'm really honored and humbled to be teaching the class today, is that Susan's always taught us that um, pictures paint a thousand words. So I'm going to share my screen. Can everybody see this picture? Okay. So this picture is a picture of our uh, sort of our torso, right? And in fact, you can do this while we while I show you some things. First of all, I have to point out that um, the connective cartilage here from the ribs into the breastbone has been cut away so that you can actually see what's going on underneath. But if you take your hands and you find the base of your breastbone, and then you use your fingers and you actually trace down along your ribs, which would be sort of along here, and then let your fingers go over the fleshy part of your belly and find your hip crests. That is what 
we in our work going down to your pubic bone, you can even feel down to your pubic bone right between your legs. That's what we call our somatic center in this work. For what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna propose a kind of an expanded sense of what somatic center means, because we're gonna start adding in muscles into this picture and you're gonna see that the muscles that comprise our abdomen, they don't stop at what would be that lower perimeter of our rib cage. They actually connect up into our ribs and back. And that's important for when we think about the kinds of movements that we do when we use those muscles. So let's add in some muscles here. Uh, we're not gonna go through all the muscles in detail, um, but what you're seeing here is your iliacus and this is your diaphragm. And again, look how high up underneath your rib cage your diaphragm goes. And as we look at some of these pictures, um, put your attention on, I'm gonna make this picture a little bit bigger, put your attention on the directions in which the fibers move, because that tells us a lot about the kinds of movements that we can do with particular muscles. So what you're seeing here, for example, this is your psoas major, uh, the unhighlighted part is your psoas minor, but notice it's such a long muscle, you can see how it goes over your pubic bone and connects into your thigh, which is why it is a hip flexor, right? It brings uh, our pelvis forward and up towards our, uh, our front of our body. So uh, let's add in some more layers here. Well, wait, let me go to the right one. So here, this is your transverse abdominus. And by the way, it's cut away here because what it feeds into is connective tissue. So. Let's take a look at this from the side. Notice these fibers. Can you see how the fibers of your transverse, the name is appropriate, the fibers run across your body. So it's kind of like, a, it's a, it wraps really around, you can think of it as wrapping fully around our body when it connects into our connective tissue. But notice down at the bottom, there are fibers that run down. So it's gonna function as well to bring our pubic bone up towards our navel. Okay, so now let's add in some more layers. Next layer is our rectus abdominis. Okay, so this one is what most people think of when they think of their abdominal muscles, the six pack. Notice, look how high up it connects. Actually, let me see if I can get rid of that. There we go. So you see that you're, through connective tissue, your rectus abdominis is connecting way up towards your fourth and fifth rib here and then all the way down to your pubic bone, the muscle fibers are long on that vertical line. Let's add another layer in. It's amazing, the sort of orchestra of muscles that we have here. This is your internal oblique. All right, let's again look at this from the side. This is another beautiful shapes here. So you can see that your internal oblique connects to your pelvis, but look at how it moves. Can you see how it sweeps on an upward diagonal up towards your rib it up towards your rib cage into connective tissue here? It connects to your rib cage down here. So when we laterally flex, these points are coming together. And when we rotate, this muscle is going to take us to the same side when we rotate. Notice too, it's got some of those downward fibers. So it also participates in flexion of our spine. Okay. And then finally. Let us add in these big external obliques, all right? So this is on top of everything. And again, let's look at it from the side because what you'll see, look how actually far back, and in fact, you could feel this. If you take your hand to your rib cage and draw back, your external oblique is really connecting. It's not just, in, this, in other words, this is not a two-dimensional shape that we have here. Our somatic center is really three-dimensional and you can see that in the connection points. Again, you can see how these um, muscles have, have this kind of fan shape. They're going to contribute to flexion. They're going to contribute to side bending and, of course, rotation. External obliques take us to the opposite side. All right. So it's nice to have a little visual because what we're going to do in our actual practice is to try to see if we can find through our awareness each of these individual muscles and then how they work together as we combine different movements that we can do with our spine. So I'm gonna stop the share and let's get ready to practice. Let me say a couple of words about guidelines for the practice. So if there's anyone who is new today, our primary tool that we use in our somatic practice is what we call pandiculation. 
Panticulation is the conscious contraction of muscles and then a very conscious and slow release of those muscles followed by complete relaxation. So that is our primary tool. You always want to move from a position of comfort. So adapt as you need to in order to be in a position that makes you comfortable. And please stay within your own comfortable range of motion. If you experience the slightest discomfort, back off, okay? Make the movements smaller. You can make them slower. You don't even have to do the movement. You can think it and your muscles will actually contract. That's how powerful our brain is in terms of its effect on our uh, neuromuscular system. Uh, a couple of other things to think about. This is a practice of unwinding and undoing. So as you practice today, notice how much effort you bring to the practice and see if you can find just the right amount of effort. This is like, you know, Goldilocks and the three bears. When are you going to sit in the chair that's just right for you? So notice if you have a tendency to over effort and just maybe back off. Sometimes smaller movements can have an incredibly powerful effect in terms of insight. And then finally, a lot of the movements we're gonna to do today, I'm actually gonna cue them to you with breath. But if you find that what I cue doesn't work for you, you're doing something different, please just breathe as you need to, all right? And just make sure you don't hold your breath, keep your breath flowing throughout the practice, all right? So I see everybody's pretty much down on the floor. One other thing we will do at one point in the practice, you're gonna be sliding your heel long on the floor. So you might wanna make sure you have a pair of socks so that you uh, don't create friction if you're working on uh, a carpet or on a sticky mat. So once you're ready, you might also wanna have a couple of pillows. You could also have uh, a towel or a blanket for under your head. And then settle down on the floor in whatever position is comfortable for you. So that might be with your knees bent, it might be with your legs straight. If you have a big uh, curve in your low back, sometimes bending your knees is a nicer option than having your legs straight, especially as we begin. And as you settle, you might wanna take support under your head so that your chin is a little bit lower than your forehead and the back of your neck can stay nice and long. And then once you've settled, now let your attention come to how you're making contact with the floor. Tune into what you're feeling in your soma right now. And every place where you make contact with the floor. So if your knees are bent, feel your feet. If your legs are extended, notice how your heels are making contact with the floor. Travel your awareness up, your legs. Notice any differences between the right and left side of your body. Maybe one leg is more turned out than the other. And then come to your pelvis and notice how your pelvis is making contact. So does one side feel heavier than the other, more in contact with the floor? Maybe you experience it as less in contact with the floor. And then thinking about that picture we just looked at, notice what sensations you feel in your somatic center. So from your pubic bone, in your whole abdominal cavity, coming up to your rib cage, even going past into some of your ribs as well, knowing that the connection points of some of those muscles are there. And just be aware of any sensation that you feel. How are you starting the practice? Feel your shoulders on the floor. Again, notice, is one side different than the other? How are they different? And then feel your head resting on whatever surface. And then come to your jaw with your attention. Notice if you're clenching at all, or if there's tightness in your jaw, put a little space between your upper and lower teeth. Let your tongue rest easy in your mouth so that your jaw is soft. And then let your attention come to your breath, maybe at the tip of your nose. Begin to notice your breath as it comes in and out of your body.
take one more breath, just sensing it right at your nostrils, how cool it is when you breathe in, warmth when you breathe out. And then notice what is moving in your torso when you breathe. Because we're going to do a lot of work related to muscles that connect to our rib cage. It's good to sense how your breath is right now. How are you starting? Where do you feel movement? Maybe you feel your belly rising and falling, rising on your inhale, gently contracting on your exhale. And then notice if you feel your rib cage moving. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. You don't have to make anything happen. Let sensations come to you in the course of the practice. We'll take one or two more breaths here. Just being aware of what's moving on both your inhale and your exhale. And then let's begin our uh, exploration. So if your legs are straight, go ahead and bend one knee at a time, plant your feet on the floor and take, your, take one of your hands and bring it all the way down to the bottom of your abdomen so that you can actually rest a finger on your pubic bone. You might have, want to have a pillow underneath your elbow if you feel like you're not supported there. So you can do that. And then when you have one hand where your pinky is kind of resting on your pubic bone, take your other hand and stack it right above. So not one on top of the other so that your thumb of your bottom hand and the pinky of your top hand touch each other. And then bring your awareness to the very lowest part of your abdomen. So when we think about that picture, if you take a breath in, when you exhale, if you contract your very lowest abdominal muscles, see if you can feel a little tip of your pubic bone up towards your navel. You might feel your thumb and your pinky come together. And then when you inhale, feel your thumb and your pinky separate and your pubic bone return to its starting position. And let's do that again. So again, take your breath in first. And when you exhale, find that gentle contraction very low down in your abdomen. Maybe you feel your fingers come together. And then on your in-breath release. So let's add a little bit more awareness here. You might notice, we didn't show a picture of your pelvic floor, but your pelvic floor is the sling of muscles that supports your abdominal cavity. See if you notice how your pelvic floor is moving when you breathe. So for some people, when they breathe in, they have a sense that their pelvic floor is actually also moving down, just like their respiratory diaphragm. Some people feel the opposite, that when their respiratory diaphragm goes down, their pelvic floor comes up. See what you feel. And then for today, we'll work with exploring, letting your pelvic floor come up on your exhale. So take your breath in, let your belly soften. And as you exhale, gather your pelvic floor gently up and find that tiny tip of your pubic bone up towards your rib cage. And then inhale, release your abdominal muscles, the low muscles, and release your pelvic floor. We will do that one more time. So again, as you exhale, gather your pelvic floor up, feel that little tip of your pelvis as your lower abdominal muscles engage, and then inhale and release. Good. Now, take your bottom hand and move it above your top hand. So now the pinky of your bottom hand is resting just above your thumb of the hand that was first on top. So you're roughly over your navel. And if you wanna move your hand so that you are actually over your navel, you can do that. So let's think again, remember the transverse abdominis fibers, how they ran horizontally around your body. Let's think about the movement of your navel and what those muscles might be doing. So take your breath in, and as you exhale, draw your navel down towards your spine and feel that contraction. And then with your in-breath, let your navel release. Let's do that one more time again. With your exhale, draw your navel down. Be gentle, it doesn't have to be a big movement. Feel that contraction, that sinking of your navel. Inhale to release. Now let's put that together 
with gathering your pelvic floor and the little tip of your pubic bone. So take a nice breath in, soften through your belly. On your exhale, gather your pelvic floor, find that little tip of your pelvis and draw your navel down towards your spine. And then inhale and let all of that go. And then one more time. As you exhale, gather your pelvic floor, find that little tip of your pubic bone from those lower abdominals engaging, feel your navel draw towards the floor and then inhale and release. Good, now take your hands and rest the flat of your palm at your waist so that your fingers point in towards your navel and you're kind of between your uh, pelvis and your rib cage. So as you take your breath in, feel how your waist expands into your hands. And when you exhale, use your hands to gently guide your waist in. So it's like you're cinching your waist as if you had a belt around your middle. Draw your waist in and then inhale and let your breath come back out. Feel your waist move into your hands. Try that one more time. So we're thinking again about those muscles with those horizontal fibers. As you exhale, draw them in. Feel your waist cinch in and then inhale and release. Let's put all that together with what we were doing before. So on your next exhale, gather your pelvic floor, find the gentle tip of your pubic bone, draw your navel down, cinch your waist in, and then inhale and let go. One more time on your next exhale again, gather your pelvic floor, find that little tip of your pubic bone, draw your navel down, cinch your waist in, and then inhale and release. Good, pause for a moment, let your hands rest wherever they're comfortable and just sense and feel. Notice how you're feeling your breath now. Notice any sensations as a result of those movements. And then take your hands and rest them on your rib cage. So right below your breasts, kind of right below your bra line. So your fingers are gonna point down towards your navel. You'll take a breath in here. When you exhale, use the weight of your hands to guide your rib cage down towards your pubic bone and also down towards the floor. So it's kind of a double down movement. And then with your in breath, release and feel the expansion in your rib cage. And let's do that again. So again, on your exhale, use the weight of your hands to gently guide your rib cage down towards your pubic bone and down towards the floor. Remember those oblique muscles, the external obliques, they contribute to this movement and inhale and release. And then let's put all of this together. So take a breath in. And on your next exhale, gather your pelvic floor, find the tip of your pubic bone up towards your rib cage, let your rib cage come down towards your pubic bone, draw your navel towards the floor, cinch your waist in, and then inhale and let all of that go. Let's go one more time. This is our flatten. So as you're ready, Gather your pelvic floor on your exhale, tip your pubic bone up, draw your navel down, cinch your waist in, let your ribs come down. You might even feel your head tip back as you do this. And then inhale and release. Good, pause for a moment. So if all of that happens when we exhale, let's find our arch on our in-breath. So you're welcome to keep your hands on your body anywhere that you find fruitful for giving you sensory feedback. Otherwise you can put your arms down by your side. And then this time, when you take your breath in, let your pubic bone tip towards your feet. Your tailbone will press down into the floor. You're gonna find a little arch and contraction in your low back. Let's make it a pure pandiculation. Exhale just to neutral. Now take your breath in again, let your belly soften, and let's find that full flattening, gathering from your pelvic floor, tipping your pubic bone up, drawing your rib cage down, your navel sinking, your waist cinching in. Again, pure pandiculation, 
release out of this contraction to neutral. On your next in breath, go ahead and tip your pelvis forward. Notice when you inhale and tip your pelvis forward, can you feel all those muscles you were just contracting, how they lengthen so that your back can contract? And then slowly release. And then one more time on your own. Find your flatten. Tuning into all those different vectors of movements of the muscles that allow you to contract your abdomen. Releasing them on your in-breath. Finding one more arch on your inhale. Next inhale, and then releasing again to neutral. If you feel like you need to do a small flatten after an arch for your comfort in your back, please go ahead and do that. And then you can stretch your legs out and take a little moment here to sense and feel. How are those movements reverberating in your soma now? What do you feel in your somatic center, your slightly expanded somatic center? Notice your breath. And then let's continue to explore. So we're working in the sagittal plane with flexion and extension here. Let's explore a little bit more flexion working from our upper body down. So take your hands behind your head. And remember that you can have your legs bent here, probably might be a little bit more comfortable to slide your legs bent. Remember that feeling of having your hands on your rib cage and the weight of your hands drawing your rib cage down. So take a breath in here. And when you exhale, Try to sink your rib cage down towards your pubic bone here with your hands behind your head. You might notice that your elbows lighten ever so slightly from the floor when you do that. And then slowly release on your in-breath. Feel your sternum rise up. Let's do that one more time. So take your breath in. As you exhale, let your sternum sink down now towards the ground. Draw your ribs down. You might feel your elbows lift just a little bit away from the floor. If you're going into a more full curl, that's okay too. Slowly release. This time we will add a lift of your head. Keep your elbows wide and try a very small movement here. So take a breath in. You can do a little arch in your low back if you like and then release as you exhale. Again, we'll stick with making these pure pendiculations. Now take another breath in. This time as you exhale, contract your lower abdomen and lift your elbows and your head away from the floor, maybe just a couple of inches and feel how that sends your rib cage and your sternum down. This contraction, this is happening courtesy of your external obliques and your rectus abdominis among other muscles slowly release and come back down to the floor. Good. And then you're welcome to stay with this very modified version of the arch and curl. If you'd like to do a full arch and curl, take a breath in and find a little arch in your low back. Exhale and release. You can use your next in-breath to bring your elbows together in front of your face. And then when you next exhale, Curl up, tucking your chin, engaging your lower abdomen. You can add that gathering of your pelvic floor. Try to find all of those movements again, cinching in your waist, only lifting as high as is comfortable. And then slowly let your head come down. Take your time on this part of the movement. Let it be luxurious so you can feel all those muscles that were just contracted on your front. Let them lengthen and then let your elbows slowly come out to the side. And pause. You can take your hands out from behind your head. You're welcome to extend your legs. And again, notice the reverberation of the movement you just did. How do you still feel the echo of it in your soma? Good. 
So let's add awareness now of rotation as well as the flexion movement that we've been doing. So once again, bend your knees if your legs are straight and take your right hand and rest it on your left ribs. So just below your breast, take a breath in. And when you exhale, use your hand to draw your left ribs across your body. And notice what you feel contracting, especially in your right lower waist. So you don't even have to lift your head up off the floor. It's a very small movement. We're really just using our hand to move our rib cage a little bit. So try that again, release completely. And then one more time, breath in. And as you exhale, draw your left ribs across your body towards your right hip and feel what muscles you feel engaging. It's your lower, it's your right internal obliques, your left external obliques here, good. Now you may have noticed that you wanted to lift your shoulder or your elbow. So let's add that into the equation. Take your left hand behind your head. You can keep your right hand where it is if you're finding having your hand on your soma useful to you. Breathe in and when you exhale, guide your left ribs towards your right hip. Let your left elbow peel away from the floor. You don't even have to lift your head. Just let your elbow come up. Maybe you let your head turn to the right and feel again what muscles are contracting to do this and then slowly release your elbow to the floor, release your rib cage back to its starting position. We're gonna keep building. This time, when you take this movement, you can let your elbow peel away from the floor. You can even lift your head on the diagonal. So it's the upper part of our diagonal curl. Take your breath in and on your exhale, guide your left ribs to the right, Lift your left elbow up off the floor and move it in the direction of your right hip. Maybe your head wants to turn to the right. And then very slowly, release your head, release your elbow, release your rib cage back down onto the floor. Rest for a moment, finishing the one that you're on. And then bring your attention to your right lower abdomen. In fact, you can take your right hand now and place it on your right lower abdomen. So we're gonna add in awareness of your psoas in its function as a hip flexor. So let's do this one time on its own. Take a breath in. When you exhale, make as if to lift your right foot, but you're not gonna lift it. It's as if it's glued to the floor. And when you try to lift, notice the engagement in your lower right abdomen, and then very slowly release that as you breathe in. Good. Let's put that together with your upper body. So again, you're going to keep your right foot on the floor and make as if to lift it. Take a breath in. You can add a little arch here if you want to. Tip your pelvis forward. Exhale and come to neutral. Take another breath in, and then when you exhale, peel your left elbow away from the floor. Make as if to lift your right foot, bring your left elbow and your left rib cage towards your right hip. Notice now what you feel contracting on that diagonal, your external obliques twisting you towards the right, your internal obliques taking you in the same direction, and then slowly release, release your hip back into the floor as you release your elbow and let your rib cage come back down, good. Now we'll do this one more time, your choice. You can stick with this version of keeping your right foot glued to the floor, or you can come into the more uh, typical version of our diagonal curl, allowing your right foot to lift up off the floor and bringing your left elbow and your right knee towards each other. So take a little breath in, find this little arch in your low back. Exhale, pandiculate, release your low back. Inhale in your neutral position. Now on your exhale, Peel your left elbow away. Draw your left ribs towards your right hip. Maybe you lift your right foot. Maybe you don't. It's up to you. And then very, very slowly, how slowly 
can you release? As you do this, slide your right leg long. Rest completely. Once your leg is extended, let it flop open. And then you can let both legs straighten. Take your hand out from behind your head. And again, tune into the after effects of the movement. Notice if you have a somewhat clearer sense of rotating to the right, how that activates your left external obliques and your right internal obliques, as well as other muscles, but your obliques are the primary reference muscle for that movement. Take a few breaths. And then let's repeat this on the other side. So once again, if your legs are straight, go ahead and bend your knees. This time you're gonna take your left hand to your right ribs. So your brain knows where we're going, so we may not do as many repetitions on this side, but let's start with a very small movement here. Take a breath in. When you exhale, use your left hand to draw your right rib cage across your body and down towards your left hip. Feel the contraction in your left lower waist as you do this. That's your internal oblique on the left side. Slowly release, letting your rib cage come back to its neutral position. Let's add your arm into the equation. So now bend your right arm, take your hand behind your head. For this first repetition, you don't even have to lift your head up off the floor, just peel your elbow away. So take a breath in. As you exhale, draw your right ribs across towards your left hip. Let your right elbow peel off off the floor. Maybe your head turns a little bit to the left. Again, notice how does this change the way you feel the contraction? Very slowly release your elbow, let your head come back to center, release your right ribs to the floor. Make sure you relax completely, take an extra breath. Now we'll add in actually lifting your head to so the upper part of the diagonal curl. As you're ready, take a breath in, draw your right ribs to the left, peel your right elbow away from the floor, tuck your chin, lift your head, bringing your right elbow towards your left hip. And then slowly let that come down. Let your head come back to center. Good. Take your time. It's no rush. Now, let's add in awareness of your psoas muscle in the left side of your lower abdomen. You can place your left hand on your lower abdomen if it helps you to feel. Let's try just the leg movement first. Take a breath in. When you exhale, make as if to lift your left foot, but it's glued to the floor, so you can't lift it. Feel the engagement as you just try to lift and then slowly release. Now let's add in your upper body for this first repetition. Keep your foot on the floor, make as if to lift, and we'll add extending your leg as we release. So here we go. Take a breath in. You can find a little arch if you want to. Exhale and make it a pendiculation. Just release back to neutral. Take your breath in again. Now on your exhale, peel your right elbow away. Bring your right ribs towards the left. Make as if to lift your left foot, but don't lift. Feel how that engages your psoas muscle. As you slowly come down, slide your leg long, your left leg long. Take your time, go super slow. You might even see if you can finish both, all parts of the movement at the same time so that as your elbow comes down, you're releasing your leg. Relax and take a breath here. Let your leg relax completely. And then we'll try that one more time. So when you're ready, re-bend your legs. Your choice, you can either work with this version where you keep your foot on the floor, making as if to lift it, or you can come into the full version of the diagonal curl. We'll go right from the arch to the curl this time. So inhale and find your arch, little arch in your low back. As you start your exhale, release the arch, 
and curl. Peel your right elbow away. Focus on how you feel your rib cage moving to the left. Maybe you lift your left foot up off the floor. Maybe you don't. Feel that contraction, your external obliques, your internal obliques on your left, and other all the other abdominal muscles that contribute to flexion are engaging here. As you release and come down, slowly slide your left heel long. And rest. Take your hand out from behind your head and sense and feel. Do you have a new sense of those lines of contraction on the front of your body from one side of your rib cage to the opposite hip? Maybe yes, maybe no, just see what you feel. And then having done all of this work now with your abdominal muscles on the front of your body, go ahead, make your way onto your belly. If it's comfortable for you to turn your head to the right, turn your head to the right. If it's not comfortable for you to turn your head, just keep your head center and you can uh, place your palms underneath your forehead. Now we're just gonna touch on your uh, extensor muscles of your back, which having released the front of your body, let's see how it feels to actually contract more of the muscles of the back of your body. So with your head turned to the right, bring your right uh, hand up. You can place it underneath your left cheek. We're gonna go into first just your upper body, and then we'll add your lower body. Your left arm is down by your side. As you're ready on your next in-breath, lift your right hand elbow and head only as far as is comfortable. Feel the engagement in your back muscles. Feel how they contract. And then very slowly release. Take your time. Once you touch down, relax completely. Let your body spread like water. Now bring your attention to your left leg. When you inhale, Lift your left leg, it doesn't have to be far, it could be an inch or two. Notice the muscles on the back of your body that engage as you lift your left leg and very slowly release. And then let's put those two movements together, our classic back lift. So as you inhale, you're lifting your right elbow, your right hand, your head, and your left leg. So all the muscles of your back are shortening. The muscles on the front of your body are long to let you do this. Can you sense into that? And then slowly, slowly release and come down. Again, take an extra breath. Let your body spread like water. Bend your left arm, bring your hand up to your head. You're gonna turn your head. As you turn your head, keep your neck long. So as you lift your head, tuck your chin in towards your chest. You're gonna turn your head now to the left. Your right arm will come down by your side. And we'll go into just the full back lift for several repetitions. So as you're ready, on your in-breath, now you're lifting your left elbow, your hand and your head and your right leg. Feel the contraction on the diagonal across your back, facilitated by length in the muscles on the front of your body. And then slowly make your way down at your own pace. Once you touch down, relax completely. And then take two more repetitions, just at your own pace. Make your descent especially slow if you can so that you have time to feel the contraction and then the release of that contraction. Working with the diagonal lines of contraction on the back of your body, your extensor muscles, which are gonna be able to contract more easily when your front muscles are lengthened. 
Good. Rest when you come down. Finish the movement that you're on. And once you finish the movement that you're on, slowly make your way onto your back again, just for a moment. As you come onto your back, notice how you're feeling your breath now front of your body and the back of your body and your sides. And then make your way onto your right side. So when you come onto your side, you want enough support underneath your head for your head to be right in line with your spine. And it's as if you're sitting in a straight back chair. So your head is directly above your pelvis and you'll draw your knees up to about 90 degrees if that's comfortable and then let your feet be directly below your knees. And you can rest your uh, left arm on your side if you like. Find yourself comfortable, get comfortable first. And notice first, are you actually slightly in flexion? Often when we come to lie on our sides, we have a little bit of flexion where the front of our body is coming closer together. So see if you can bring your head directly above your pelvis. That might mean drawing your bottom shoulder underneath you a little bit so that your shoulders can stack. Good. Now, take the heel of your left hand and you're gonna rest it on your hip crest. So your hip crest is kind of the top of your hip, right? You know, before you you have your hands in the fleshy part of your waist. So you're going to use the palm of your hand to provide a little bit of resistance. So it's not resting so much on your buttock as it is at your waist. The heel of your palm is at your waist and your hand, your fingers are kind of pointing down. That's right. So you're resting on the top of your hip crest. So take a nice breath in when you exhale. Glide your left hip up towards your waist, but give a little resistance with your palm and feel the muscle that contracts underneath your palm as you do that. Again, your transverse abdominis, your internal obliques, remember some of those pictures of the connection of those muscles into your pelvis. And then try that once again, take a breath in, slight bit of resistance with your palm, try to hike your left hip. Feel the contraction in your waist and then very slowly release. Let's add the movement of your leg as we would in our classic side curl. Take your breath in. As you exhale and provide a little resistance, internally rotate your left leg. Your knees will stay together. Your left foot will lift. And notice perhaps how that helps you feel that hike of your hip. And then very slowly keep that pressure of your hand on your hip. Use it to guide your hip down as you release your leg back down and lengthen through your side waist. Good, rest at the bottom. You can straighten your left arm and just drape it over your hip now. So let's add in your upper body. When you exhale next, you're gonna draw your uh, armpit and your hip closer together. Your thigh will internally rotate and your top foot will lift. So take a breath in, soften through your belly. And as you exhale, bring your armpit towards your hip, your hip towards your armpit, lift your top foot, keep your knees together. Your head might come away from your pillow. If it does, you can provide support either with your hand underneath or with your top arm. Your head does not have to lift and then slowly make your way down. Really try to move from your center, feel your hip move away from your armpit and the length that you create in your left side. So now let's play with combining, this is lateral flexion with rotation. And we'll layer these parts in. So once again, take a nice breath in, let your belly soften. As you exhale, come into your side bend. So bringing your armpit and your hip closer together can be a very small movement. Maybe you lift your foot and internally rotate. Don't have to lift your foot high. Stay here in your contraction. 
breathe into your bottom ribs. And then on your next exhale, take your left shoulder and rotate it forward towards your right knee. So you're combining lateral flexion with rotation and then slowly release the rotation and release the side curl. Come to rest, pause and take a breath. Let's try that again, but reverse the layers. So take a breath in, soften through your belly. This time as you exhale, first rotate, bring your left shoulder forward and slightly down towards your right knee. Stay there, breathe into your bottom ribs. And then as you exhale, come into your side curl, keeping the rotation, adding in your lateral flexion. And then very slowly release out of the lateral flexion and release your rotation. Once you come down, completely pause and rest. We're gonna do the opposite movement. So we just did rotating, using our external obliques to rotate us towards the opposite side. Now you're gonna rotate back behind you, just a small movement with your shoulder. See if you can sense how your internal obliques are gonna help with that movement. So let's start again by coming into the side curl. Take a breath in, soften your belly. When you exhale, come into the side curl, bring your hip and your armpit closer together. Now stay here, breathe into your bottom ribs. And then when you exhale, find a little bit of rotation, external rotation in your shoulder joint, taking your shoulder slightly back behind you, combining the opposite rotation pattern. Maybe you feel your back muscles engage here as well, and then slowly release out of that rotation and the side curl. If you're lifting your head away from your pillow, you might wanna bend your bottom arm and put your hand under your head to provide a little bit of support just so you don't strain your neck at all. Let's try that reverse layer. First you'll rotate, then you'll come into the side curl. So take a breath in. As you exhale, rotate open, taking your top shoulder slightly back behind you, not a big movement. Stay here, breathe into your bottom side. And then on your exhale, come into the side curl combined with the rotation. Notice where you're feeling contraction. And then very slowly release, coming back to stacking your shoulders, coming out of the side curl. Good. And once you finish the movement, Nice and gently come onto your back. And again, extend your legs and feel. Notice how your left side feels now compared to your right. Breathe into your left side. You're welcome to put your hands anywhere on your body if that sensory feedback would be useful to you. Feel the reverberation of the movements that you just did in your soma. Take one more breath here. And now go ahead and roll over onto your left side. I'm gonna work with your right side now. You're coming into the straight back chair position. Make sure you have enough support under your head so that your head is in line with your spine. You're always welcome to take your bottom hand underneath your head for a little bit extra support. Have your head directly above your pelvis. Your knees are bent at 90 degrees or roughly thereabouts, whatever is comfortable. Your feet are directly below your knees. Your head is just above your pelvis. Your shoulders are stacked. Take your right hand now to the heel of your palm, to the crest of your hip. We're gonna provide a little bit of resistance as you take a breath in, when you exhale, draw your right hip up now towards your waist, but resist a little bit with your palm. Feel the muscles contract. 
and then keep that weight there. Let your hand guide your hip away from your center as you release. Let's do that once again. Breath in, soften your belly. As you exhale, guide your right hip up towards your armpit, finding a little resistance with your hand. Feel the contraction. Keep your hand there and use your hand to guide your hip away from your center. Let's go right into the full side curl. So let your top arm extend, resting on your hip. We're going to add in the internal rotation of your top thigh. You're going to bring your armpit and your hip closer together. So as you're ready on your next exhale, bring your armpit and your hip closer together. Internally rotate your right leg. Your right foot will lift. Your knees will stay together. Feel the contraction, lateral flexion here. And then very slowly release. Remember that feeling of your hand against your hip. Guide your hip away from your center, your armpit away from your center. Good. One more time, just doing the side curl. So again, take your breath in, soften through your belly. On your exhale, you're bringing your armpit and your hip closer together, internally rotating your top leg, your knees stay together, feel how short you are in your side, and then slowly let that go. Come to rest. We're gonna layer in now, rotation forward and backward with lateral flexion. So we'll start with our forward rotation. Take your breath in, and come again into the side curl, bringing your armpit and your hip closer together. You can support your head with your bottom hand if you're lifting your head away from your pillow. Stay here, breathe into your bottom ribs. And then as you exhale, rotate your top shoulder forward and down towards your bottom knee. Combining rotation and lateral flexion, slowly release out of that. Take your time. Take a breath. Let's reverse the layering order. So this time, take your breath in. Start by rotating your top shoulder forward and down towards your bottom knee. Stay there and breathe into your underside ribs. And then on your exhale, come into the side curl. Keep the rotation as you do that. You have to use your external and internal obliques here in both their capacities as lateral flexion and rotation, and then slowly release. Rest when you come down. Take a nice breath. Let's try the opposite rotational movement. So take your breath in, soften your belly. With your exhale, come into the side curl first. Then be very gentle here. Stay here, breathe into your bottom ribs. And now as you exhale, rotate backwards slightly with your upper shoulder. And then release, release the rotation and release the side curl. Come to rest. And then we'll reverse the order. So this time, take your breath in, let your belly soften. As you exhale, lead first with the rotation. So you're rotating your right shoulder back behind you. Feel what engages to do that. And then breathe into your underside. And then add your side curl. So on your exhale, keep the rotation, add the lateral flexion and then very, very slowly release and rest. So staying in the side curl position, let's come back and do a little of our arching and we can call it curling in this position because you don't have the floor to restrict your movement. So take your breath in and out, free breath here. And then on your next inhale, gently tip your pelvis forward. 
And as you exhale, remember what we did at the beginning of class, gather your pelvic floor, draw your pubic bone up, draw your navel back towards your spine, cinch at your waist and bring your rib cage down. And then inhale and let all of that go. You can go right into the arch if you like. And let's do that again. Just noticing how do those movements feel when you change your position? So once again, your inhale, you arch, contracting in your low back, maybe a little more of your back in the side lying position. And then on your exhale, find that gathering from your pelvic floor, the tip of your pubic bone up, drawing your navel in, cinching at your waist, bringing your ribs down. And then with your in breath, let that go. Feel your rib cage expand and your belly soften, your waist soften. One more time on your next in breath again, find a little arch. And then with your exhale, gather from your pelvic floor, feel your pubic bone tip up, feel your ribs come down to meet them, draw your belly back, navel back, cinch your waist. And then slowly release. Good, come onto your back when you're ready. And again, take a moment to sense and feel. How do the two sides of your body feel now? Is there perhaps a little more space? Tune into the front of your body as you breathe. Tune into the sides of your body as you breathe. Tune into the back of your body as you breathe. And then let's do a little bit of rotation, but rotation coming from your pelvis instead of from your rib cage. So if your legs are straight, once again, bend your knees. You might want to have pillows available for this. Let me describe what you'll do and uh, that will help you know. We're gonna take, we're gonna take our twist, but we're gonna do each leg separately. So for example, here on your back, take a nice breath in. With your exhale, let your right knee drop down to the side. So you're gonna externally rotate in your right hip. This is where you might want a pillow so that you don't overdo some kind of support so that you can bring your uh, leg into external rotation comfortably. So once you have that, you have your left knee is still standing up. Take another breath in, and when you exhale now, bring your left knee towards your right. And notice how you're rotating now from your pelvis instead of from your rib cage. Your weight's going into your right hemipelvis, your left hemipelvis is lightening. Now, one at a time, bring your left knee slowly back up to vertical. Feel the muscles that you have to use in your abdomen to bring your knee back up to vertical. You put your hands on your abdomen to do this. And then slowly bring your right knee back up to vertical. And again, notice what you have to engage in order to do that movement. Let's try it one more time again to the right. So take your breath in. As you exhale, just gently let your right knee begin to drop out to the side. Feel your weight come into your right hemipelvis. And then on your next breath, doesn't matter, inhale or exhale, let your left knee drop towards your right. Feel the rotation in your pelvis. And then exquisitely slowly bring your left knee back up to vertical and feel what engages for you to do that. 
and then add bringing your right knee back up to vertical. So take your time, just going at your own pace. And when you finished the one that you're on, take your support and bring it to your other side. So now it's outside of your left hip. And we'll do the same explorations. Take your breath in, start by letting your left thigh and knee release to the floor. So you're externally rotating in your hip joint and you're bringing your weight is beginning to come into now your left hemipelvis. And then let your right knee and thigh follow. Feel how your weight goes into your left side. Maybe your head wants to turn in the same direction or opposite, see what makes sense for you. And then very slowly lift your right knee back up to vertical. Take your time here. The more time you take, the more opportunity you actually have to sense and feel what is engaging in order to do that movement? What helps you to stabilize? Once you have that knee vertical, then you're gonna slowly bring your left knee back up to vertical again. Notice what is engaging to do this movement. Once you're at vertical, take your time. If you're still working, you go at your own pace. We're gonna try that once more, starting by letting your left thigh and knee drop out into the support or to the side, feeling now you're rotating in your pelvis. Then you're gonna add your top leg, take your time, and then super slow, you bring your right knee back up to vertical, sense what's engaging in your abdomen to do this. And then once your right knee is vertical, bring your left knee back up to vertical. Good, when you come back up, Pause for a moment. You can stretch your legs out. If you're still working, take your time. There is no need to rush. If you extend your legs if you want to, again, as one of our beloved teachers likes to say, take a sensory interlude. Feel the reverberation of the movements that you just did in your soma. So let's finish with, we'll do just two more things. Let's look at the washcloth. The washcloth being our full body movement, which combines rotation in the upper body, rotation in the lower body. So bend your knees. Your arms can come out to the side in the T shape if you like. If that's not comfortable, you can bring your arms a little bit closer down by your sides. Let's just review what happens in your upper body. So just one time, take both of your shoulders and roll them forward. So your shoulders are gonna peel away from the floor and your palms will roll down and then slowly release to the floor. Take your time. Make sure that you relax completely at the end of that movement. And then find the opposite, roll both arms back. So your thumbs are gonna turn down towards the floor your shoulder blades will draw together on your back and press down, your sternum will lift and then slowly release that. And then one arm will do one of those movements, the other will do the reverse. So allow your right shoulder to roll forward, slightly up, your head will turn left as you externally rotate with your left arm, the palm will turn up towards the ceiling. Inhale and bring your head back to center as you release your shoulders. 
And then we'll go to the other side. If you know the washcloth and it's familiar to you, you can add the leg movements in. We'll add them in in a moment. Otherwise, roll your left shoulder forward. Externally rotate your arm. Let your head turn to the right. And then slowly make your way back to center. So let's put it all together once you come back to center. Now, when you lower your legs, you're welcome to play with this kind of staggered lowering of your legs, if you found that interesting in the washcloth, or you can do the washcloth as we typically do, letting both knees move at the same time. So here we go, take a breath in, let your right shoulder roll forward as your knees lower to the right, your left arm will externally rotate, your head will turn to the left. And then with your in-breath, bring everything back up to center. Can you really tune into all those muscles in your center that allow you to do this beautiful, delicious movement? Now roll your left shoulder forward, drop your knees to the left, your right arm will externally rotate and your head can turn to the right. Make your way back up to center. And then just one more set. So as you're ready, just move at your own pace. You're gonna roll your right shoulder forward, letting your right knees go to the right and your left arm externally rotate. And then the same, once you come back up to the other side, let it be delicious, full body movement. And finish the one that you're on. So we usually often end with arch and curl, but today let's end with arch and flatten. We started with arch and flatten. So let's see, how does your arch and flatten feel now at the end of the practice? So if your legs are straight, you can bend your knees. You can actually do a full body arch and flatten if you want to but you can bend your knees and you can go right from the arch into the flatten if you like. So when you inhale, tip your pelvis forward or you can make it a pendiculation. When you exhale, how does it feel now to do that contraction of all of your different abdominal muscles? Can you still sense all those fibers moving in the different directions? When you inhale, and your pelvis tips forward, can you feel the release and the length now in all of those muscles? Take one more round. And then when you finish your flatten, go ahead and rest for a moment and straighten your legs if that's comfortable. Tune into the effect of the practice. How are you now making contact with the floor? How does your whole somatic center feel, particularly the front of your body, since that's a lot of what we focused on today? And notice your breath. Has your breath perhaps shifted a little bit in the course of the practice? And I thank you so very much for your kind attention. That concludes today's class. Thank you so much, Lisa. Take your time, everyone. You may feel glued to the floor. <laughs> But uh, we are going to um, officially end the class while you're figuring out how to peel yourself. I like that word, peel, Lisa, off the floor. And for those of you that would like to stay for discussion, you are most welcome. So that will officially end our class today. Thank you again, Lisa.